Um, all right, I'm going to pass it to Stephen Dominic, who is uh, going to talk us through the photography program. Thank you so much for coming, and I will be here if you have any questions. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thanks very much, Kendra, for that uh, intro. Uh, I'm glad to see we have, uh, we now have about 13 uh, people that have joined us uh, this morning. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown on the program, the photography program at Niagara College. As most of you should know by now, it is a two-year program. Uh, it is fairly intensive. It's very lab intensive. Um, I know that probably one of the questions that many of you might have is whether or not we were on campus during COVID. And the answer to that is only partially. Uh, we had to keep uh, doing um, studio classes in our teaching studio, uh, obviously on campus, because uh, not everyone would have uh, access to uh, studio strobes and lighting and so on. So um, <clears throat> we expect to be fully back on campus by, uh, by next September. Hopefully uh, that will happen. Um, as you can see on the logo, um, we have uh, a website uh, that is titled niagaracollegephotography.com. And I would encourage all of you to visit that website. Uh, it is a remarkable resource, an archive of, uh, of student work, which we have accumulated uh, over the past uh, 10 years um, that the, uh, uh, the program has been in existence. And you will see a portfolio uh, that has been created by every graduating student. So it is a really, really great resource uh, to look at. Uh, maybe we could just move to the next slide, Kendra. So um, <clears throat> one question uh, we get a lot of is, uh, why should I choose Niagara College? Uh, for, uh, for studying photography. Um, there's basically, there's, there's two great reasons. Uh, the first great reason is we have a remarkable studio. It is, it is huge. It is a huge space. Uh, it's exciting. Um, there's brand new Ellen Chrome lighting gear, black curtain sets. Everybody sort of has their own uh, working space. Uh, it is an incredible, incredible teaching studio. Uh, the second really good reason is that <clears throat> we have uh, a remarkable staff, uh, a faculty that, they're, they're, that are all professional photographers. Um, they are teachers, but they are also photographers. Um, many, many years of experience. Uh, some of us have worked in the portrait wedding industry. Others have worked in commercial. Uh, and so on. So uh, you'll be getting it firsthand uh, from photographers uh, that have worked in the industry and that may still be working in the industry part time. Um, what do we learn? Well, it's a hands on learning program. So we always stress commercially viable photography. Um, what does that mean? It means that we, we're going to teach you how to take a camera and use the camera and use lighting to create photographs that are saleable. That is very different from the type of photography that many of us have become accustomed to, which is cell phone photography. We do not teach cell phone photography. Um, the photography that's required on a professional scale uh, might include portraits, food, uh, beverages, uh, photojournalism, architecture, small products, uh, and also out on location. We take you out on location and we'll show you how to photograph uh, a vehicle. Uh, we also have business courses. Business courses are very important uh, to photographers, primarily because uh, they're, the, the job market for photography is really self-employment. Uh, it always has been. Uh, photography is a self-employed profession and it will very likely remain that way. Um, so you have to know how to set up an office. You can be the best photographer on the planet, but if you don't have a properly set up office, a marketing plan, uh, a social media plan, um, then ultimately uh, you will not be su as successful as you could be. <clears throat> So do you need to buy a camera or a computer? And we get this question a lot from students. The important thing to realize is that our program 
is, is, is complete in the sense that we give each student a camera kit at the beginning of the year. So when you start with us in September, you will pay a tuition fee and you will also pay what's called a material fee. And the material fee includes uh, a camera kit, a lens, uh, two lenses, flash, tripod, light meters, uh, a trigger for the studio lights, uh, a backpack. Uh, so you get everything that you absolutely need. Um, over the last uh, 11 years, since the program has been in existence, we have been using Nikon branded gear. And we recognize that some of you do not use Nikons, maybe you use Canon or Sony, etc. And that's fine, that's not a, that's not a problem. Uh, we permit students to use their own gear uh, with the approval of each instructor for each course at the beginning of year two. But in year one, you have to use the camera kit that we provide for you, uh, primarily because when the instructor is teaching something like a white balance menu on a Nikon camera, and we have 25 students in a class, and everybody's got a different camera, it becomes very, very confusing for everyone. The other reason is, uh, if we uh, give you an assignment, we want everybody to be on the same technical level. So if somebody has a particular piece of gear, that might give them a technical advantage, it's really not fair for the other students. So we like to see, keep everybody on the same plane. Do you need a computer? Well, that's a good question. The answer to that is yes, and it's also no. Right now, uh, the year one Photoshop uh, and uh, editing classes are 100% online. So, uh, you can always, uh, I mean, you, you're going to have to have some way of logging in to the school computer if you don't have your own computer. Uh, obviously, if you're on campus, uh, you will have access to a Mac lab. Uh, we are a Mac based program. Uh, so I guess right now, if, if we're going to be, if we're going to have on, continue to have online classes, you're, you're going to be, ha you're going to have to get a computer, either a laptop or a desktop. Uh, laptops are more expensive than, des than desktops. Does it have to be a Mac? No, it does not. Uh, Mac uh, monitors are extremely uh, good for editing. And I'd also suggest to you that a larger uh, desktop model uh, with a larger monitor is ultimately going to be far more beneficial to you than a laptop especially when you're doing editing and batch processing, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I guess right now the answer is, do you need a computer? Yes, you should have a computer, okay? Um, so I, I hope that answers uh, any uh, questions about camera kits and also computers. Uh, we publish a full color hardcover book every year. Uh, back in 2011 or 2010, when we began the program, uh, we started with a very simple book uh, that was published online uh, by a company called Blurb, which some of you may have heard of. Uh, the book has gone on to become published by a, a huge book publishing company in Toronto by the name of Picto. Uh, it is really an incredible publication. Uh, it's included in your material fee, and it really has become both a keepsake and an archive. Uh, so it's somewhat like a yearbook. Uh, every student in the program, year one and year two, gets a full page in the book, and we showcase some of your work. Uh, the front cover is a full page photo uh, from a year two uh, student, and the back cover is always a photo that is uh, uh, sourced from a year one student. Uh, so it really is a, uh, a terrific keepsake. Uh, what's really cool is that we started this right at the beginning. So we now have uh, 11 books in our library of archives in addition to our website. So it's a, it's a really great resource for students. If you're uh, wondering what we shoot, and uh, how complex the projects are that we undertake. 
So are there any scholarships? Yes, there are. There's quite a few. Uh, the big one is the, uh, uh, the schism uh, seal. Uh, if you're in a schism uh, high school program uh, and you apply and get uh, accepted in Niagara College into our program, you will automatically receive a $1,000 entrance scholarship. Uh, so that's a lot of money uh, just to be enrolled in schism. Uh, if you visit the Niagara College website, there is a complete list of uh, additional scholarships and bursaries that are available to students every year. And I uh, believe those are dead. There are deadlines uh, that you have to apply for those. And I'm not sure what they are. Uh, what you'd have to do is really uh, go on the website. Uh, if you can't get the information that you are looking for, then I would suggest uh, either contacting myself and I can put you in touch with someone um, that will be able to help you out with scholarship money. I don't know if you wanted to chime in on that, Kendra, uh, with regards to scholarship uh, uh, applications. Of course, I can absolutely do that. So yes, the big one um, is the SHSM scholarship. So if you are continuing within your high school scholarships, generally it's arts and culture. Um, you and you meet the minimum grade point average entering into uh, one of our registered programs. Again, it's an automatic thing. I did also post into the chat a link that is a link to the current scholarships. Keep in mind uh, when you're looking at our September intakes, those scholarships don't open until the summertime. So what exists on the website right now is mainly for our January start students. Uh, basically, you have a month uh, to apply to them. Most of them don't close until the end of the first month that you're with us. So that if you do need assistance from our financial aid office, they're able to provide that to you. Um, as well as if you do need to get in touch with them, they do offer um, additional counseling and support to kind of get through the process, especially those first year students if you have any concerns at all. So I can absolutely, I'll put my email in the chat as well. Send me an email. I'm happy to talk more about that at a later date, of course. <laughs> Thank Excellent. you. That's great. Thanks, Kendra. <clears throat> so another question we get from students a lot is, can you get a locker? Yes, you can get a locker. Um, uh, you can go on the Niagara College website. It's very simple to, look to, to get a locker. Uh, it's a good idea, not only for clothing and uh, for, uh, for example, boots in the wintertime, uh, but to store some of your gear. Uh, you may not want to carry, for example, your tripod. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's a really good idea to get a locker and you can get one right in the vicinity of the teaching studio. Um, the teaching studio itself is located in the Voyager building. Um, right now, there are, there are limited access points into the building. Uh, but again, I suspect by next September, we'll be back up to, uh, hopefully back up to speed. Uh, and our main entrance into the studio is right off the doors from GLOT. Uh, but we'll get into that um, as, the, uh, as the months progress. So yeah, how is the big question going? How has COVID affected the photography program? Well, it's affected us just like it's affected just about everything else that we've been accustomed to as being normal. Um, many of our courses have gone to what we call a hybrid format, which means that some of the courses, some of the classes, I should say, are still on campus. Uh, and some of the classes are being held online. Um, our studio is like completely safe. Uh, we, uh, we have a extensive safety protocols uh, that are, are in place over and above what's required. Um, you have to wear a mask, obviously, because we're indoors. Uh, there are hand sanitizers everywhere. Uh, there is a special isopropyl alcohol solution uh, that is used to uh, uh, wipe down uh, anything that is touched uh, by a student before and after they use a particular piece of equipment. So um, it's as safe as we can get it. And uh, uh, so will this continue into September? Uh, again, I'm not sure, but I'm hoping uh, that will be back to classes fully uh, on campus come next September. 
The one thing that the photography program does uh, that is particularly interesting is we offer field trips uh, by coach bus uh, to, uh, uh, to New York City. We have obviously not done that uh, because of COVID. Uh, it, that trip has been temporarily canceled. Uh, it is not happening in uh, this coming March. Uh, we're hoping that uh, the following year it will happen again. Uh, we do have an end of year show in the auditorium that again has been temporarily moved to an online format. Um, we typically take our students to uh, Toronto to do street photography and architectural photography. Uh, we go to the uh, McMaster University campus in Hamilton uh, to do architectural shoots. Uh, and there are other localized field trips uh, that for now have been substituted with uh, alternative curriculum uh, simply because we cannot travel as a group together. So we're hoping that all of that will change uh, very shortly. Hi, my name is Mackenzie. I'm a second year photography student here at Niagara College and I just wanted to talk to you today a little bit about my experiences and why I chose this program. I chose this program because it was a little bit closer to home, but also there was many incentives that made it a no-brainer to come here. On the first day of class, I walked into a Nikon D7500 camera, two lenses, a tripod, a flash, and a strobe metering kit for you to keep. Niagara College will be giving this to you with a material fee that is produced at the beginning of September when you first arrive. That is OSAP eligible, so you don't have to worry to produce any um, other extra costs that may be uh, Once you arrive, you realize how beautiful of a studio we have. We have all high-end Allen Chrome lighting, which is one of the few colleges in Ontario to do so, as well as giving you the materials. We also have three lovely photography teachers, Grace, Jerry, and Stephen. They will give you the one-on-one -on -one time you may need in assisting you, whether that's from lighting, camera settings, to even setup. They will help you in any way and form so you can produce a high quality image and ensure that you're getting what you need and be a better photographer as the years go on. I myself had an experience two weeks ago where I took photos of the Niagara Knights soccer team doing their headshots and team photos. Grace and Steve have both assisted me because I started to feel a bit overwhelmed with all the people and how much work it was actually going to take. Once I got into the thick of it, Grace showed me how to do the lighting and Steve showed me to do the setup. It was a breeze. They were loving it. I was even having a great time and I know that I can now take all that they taught me and do it on my own to produce high-end quality images without them once I graduate from Niagara College. That is what they want to prepare you for. Once you are out of college, you don't have any hesitation on what you are shooting. You know exactly what to do and I think that they have cut me so much for the next coming years and I just can't wait to get out there into the real world and start shooting my own business. And I just really enjoyed the photography program over the last two years and I hope when you guys come you do too. So I look forward to seeing faces next year and I uh, have a great day. Thank you. Go next. There you Fantastic. go. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So just to follow up on what Mackenzie was saying, Mackenzie is one of our year two students. And um, uh, right now she is uh, uh, being hired by uh, uh, Niagara College to photograph all of the um, uh, teams. Uh, so she is working on, um, uh, on, on sports photography uh, and she has every intention of entering that as a, uh, as a professional photographer and hopefully moving on. Uh, to uh, photographing professional sports teams as well. So social media, this, the, like I mentioned previously, the most important social media connection uh, is niagaracollegephotography.com. It is a showcase of uh, student work uh, dating back 10 years. So you will see a remarkable collection of photography and I would highly encourage you uh, to take a look at that website. Uh, it's really, really cool. I think you're going to see some really neat stuff. So if you have more questions, if you have any questions, certainly right now, 
Uh, Kendra and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, but if you do have questions that you uh, either don't want to ask or maybe you forget to ask, uh, please feel free to email me. That's my email, sdominic at niagaracollege.ca. I do monitor my email every day, uh, so I will respond to you uh, right away if you have a question or a concern. Uh, if it's something that I can't address uh, right away, I will refer, uh, I'll refer your question to somebody um, that will have answers for you, okay? So please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, as Kendra mentioned before, uh, we are beginning to offer uh, on-campus tours again, uh, so that if you wanna come in, make an appointment, come in uh, and um, uh, see the teaching studio. Uh, I believe some of those, uh, those tours might be happening on Fridays uh, and you will be able to see uh, students right now uh, that are working and shooting in the teaching studio. So it'll give you a really great idea uh, of how cool our, our facility is. All right, the first question that we have is from Brian. What are the requirements for this photography course? What courses or credits do I need to take this program? Okay, hi Ryan. Uh, there are no specific requirements. Uh, there are suggested requirements. The only required course that you have to take, believe it or not, is English. Uh, English is a requirement because obviously you've got to be fluent in the language our country operates in. Um, so uh, we recommend that you take arts courses, uh, arts-based courses. It doesn't necessarily have to be photography. So for example, if you're, if you're really good with pen and pencil on paper, uh, that is going to help you uh, with your camera. Uh, we have had students graduate from our program that uh, never held a camera, a DSLR camera in their hands before they came to us. And they graduated as, uh, as extremely viable, commercially viable photographers. Um, so there really are no, um, uh, there are no courses that are required. Uh, but we, again, if you, if you have an aptitude towards art, and design, composition, uh, ab absolutely, uh, that's going to be helpful to you big time. Perfect, thank you. The next question is from Alan. Uh, do you track past students? Uh, do you know what percentage are making an income and what type of jobs they are doing? Now, the quick answer to that is no, we don't track students, but students come back to us. Um, uh, Pre-COVID, we had visitors pretty much you know, every week, every second week, we had students coming back. I can tell you that it is very difficult to, to track self-employment um, because photographers are, are all, like I mentioned previously, have always been self-employed. I can tell you that uh, uh, some of our graduating students right now are working. Uh, some of them have gone on to forensics. Uh, they've become... Uh, involved with the police force, the Ontario Provincial Police, for example, has over 600 people working in uh, photography media. Uh, some have uh, gone on to be uh, very successful wedding photographers. Uh, we have a fellow working in the, the Netherlands in Europe, uh, who's an incredible photographer. Uh, they're sending him virtually all over Europe to shoot commercial products. Um, so, you know, I can't, I can't give you specific numbers on who finds employment because we just don't have them. Uh, what I can tell you, though, is that with any type of self-employment, your success is 100% dependent on just a few very, very important things. One of them, of course, is your skill level. You've got to be really good at this. The second one is you have to be savvy with business. You have to know how to market yourself. You have to know how to present yourself. You have to be very fluent. Um, other than that, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's not that hard to become a successful professional photographer. You have to sort of pick a niche that you're really good at, uh, that's of interest to you and stick with it. Um, and uh, I think that's one of the keys to, to, uh, to being a, a successful uh, commercial photographer. Perfect. 
The next question is from Chloe. Do you use a lot of Photoshop in this program, such as making posters and other media? Hi, Chloe. Yes, for sure. We have, uh, uh, you take a Photoshop course uh, every term. Uh, so uh, you basically remember there's some people that have never sat in front of a computer that has Photoshop on it. So we're starting at a, at, at a most basic level where the tools are introduced uh, uh, to students and then we move into more complex projects uh, such as editing um, portraiture. Uh, last week in the studio we were shooting um, uh, LCBO products, uh, beverage bottles, um, and uh, uh, we were doing a demonstration in the studio showing how we shoot a raw file and we uh, layer it uh, both from the standpoint of something called focus stacking and exposure stacking and then doing final editing in Photoshop and tweaking the image so that you might see it uh, in a publication, something like Food and Drink magazine, which the LCBO publishes on a very regular basis. So um, many of the, I would say not many, I'd say most of our assignments after year one are what we call experiential um, uh, assignments. And they are real life assignments that will require you to produce, uh, to shoot an image and edit it using Photoshop um, so that it is commercially viable, so that it is usable in the industry. Okay, thank you, Chloe. Um, and then the next question is just to clarify, the camera and other equipment are in a kit and are provided. Is there any other costs for the equipment? There are no other costs. Um, the, uh, the kit that you get is very comprehensive. Uh, we have been using the Nikon D7500 body uh, for a number of years now. Uh, what we do is we upgrade that camera as Nikon upgrades their models. Uh, so we anticipate there will be a, a there will be an upgrade by next year because that camera body has been around now for two years. Um, the two lenses that we use, uh, the one lens is a zoom lens in 18 millimeter to 140 millimeter. Um, and the other lens we provide students with is a uh, 50 millimeter uh, lens as well. The camera that you get with us is Nikon's top of the line uh, camera that has an APS-C sensor. So uh, you will quickly find out that there is something called an APS-C sensor and a full frame sensor. The full frame sensor cameras are the real industry standards. They're the, they're the pro cameras, but they, they begin like upwards of $5,000 just for the camera body. Uh, do you need it specifically for all types of professional photography? Not necessarily. If you were gonna shoot portraits and weddings, you very likely don't need that. But if you were gonna produce photographs for um, LCBO Food and Drink Magazine, you would absolutely need to move up to a, to a full frame camera. So uh, I can tell you that the work uh, our students produce on an APS-C camera that they're given is, is pretty amazing. Uh, many of our students upgrade their, cam their cameras uh, for year two. Uh, they trade in the camera that we give them, and then they upgrade to a camera that they would rather be using. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other questions, uh, comments, concerns? You can, if you are, are having issues, trouble uh, finding the Q&A, you can use the chat. I'm monitoring both. Um, but thank you all for attending. We very much appreciate your, your interest in the program, and there's some really great questions. There certainly are, and, and you know, there's probably uh, there's probably going to be more questions. I, uh, you know, listen, I'm the first one to admit this is really hard to do online. Uh, I would rather much much rather see you guys face to face uh, in our teaching studio. And uh, please feel free to take advantage of that uh, opportunity to come in and 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 see our facility. Um, it's a really really cool place to spend two years of your life uh, learning about photography and learning how you might be able to uh, uh, translate a, a college diploma in photography into a, a very uh, viable and enjoyable career. I can tell you that I was a, a full-time 
uh, commercial photographer here in the Niagara region, uh, beginning back in the early 80s. Um, I still shoot a little bit. Uh, I don't have the time because I'm here at the college, uh, but I can tell you that uh, there wasn't a day uh, that I didn't enjoy going to work. And I think that's very, very important. Uh, when you select a career, um, you have to love what you do. And uh, I think uh, you know, photography has been referred to as a passion program, and you really have to be passionate about this to be good at it and to give clients what they're, uh, you know, what they're wanting to get from you as, uh, as a client, because remember, they're going to be paying you money and you have to give them, they have a huge selection of photographers to go to now. Uh, yes, including people that use tablets and cell phones. Uh, and uh, it, uh, often it's up to us as professionals to educate clients and to show them the difference between what we can do in a studio setting with a camera versus what somebody might be able to do with a cell phone on their kitchen counter. Uh, vastly, vastly different results. And I think, if, again, if you go to that website, you will see exactly what I'm talking about because one photograph you might have heard is a thousand words. Absolutely. The next question that we have is from Cindy. Um, the course outline select says that there is one general elective course. Is there one that you would recommend? Um, you know, that's a good question, Cindy. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we've, we've had students take all kinds of weird and wonderful electives, including vampire studies, uh, how to play a guitar. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's whatever runs your clock. Um, I mean, um, if you if you've always wanted to learn how to play a guitar, uh, take a course on how to learn to play a guitar. You know, have some fun with it. Um, I think the elective is designed to broaden your educational scope, uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's related to photography. Um, you know, it could be something as uh, as varied as child studies or whatever they offer. I don't know. Uh, but I, I think it's important to have a, a well-rounded experience when you're at the college level. Um, and, and, and sort of on, on that same note, I can tell you that we have had students in our program that range from high school graduates that are 17, 18 years old to people that are, have taken a, a couple of years off. They've worked and they decided they want to come back to school uh, in their 20s and 30s. And we've also had people uh, as old as me uh, take, uh, uh, take the photography program because it's something that they've always wanted to, to learn and do. Uh, we had uh, one graduate uh, this past year in April that was a retired elementary school teacher. And uh, she was uh, in her, I think she was in her early 60s. And uh, uh, she... <laughs> She, she, did, she did not know the first thing about a camera when she started with us. And you've got to see the work she's doing now. And I mean, it's just, and she's loving it, absolutely loving it. She's found a second career and she's absolutely loving it. Um, a number of years ago, we had a student uh, that graduated from our culinary program uh, at the Niagara on the Lake campus. And he was a professional chef and uh, he, uh, he, he loved cooking, but he also wanted to learn how to photograph what he was cooking. So he took our program and uh, he's doing really well. I mean, he's, he's a professional chef as well as a professional photographer. So, you know, there are so many different uh, avenues that you can take from an educational standpoint, um, including if you're coming from a university background, uh, a number of years ago, we had a student that graduated uh, from a program, I think it was something like mar marine biology or zoology or something of that nature in Western Canada. And she came and took our program because she had to carry a camera with her in the field. And um, she, that, that's, she just wanted to learn everything she could about how to take better photographs. And um, she's, she, she is still a marine biologist uh, but she's also a very good photographer now to supplement what she is doing professionally. Amazing. 
some students have taken, if you do want to stick within like a creative realm, I know some students have taken like art and design foundation courses, like a little bit more like figure drawing. And if you're still interested in kind of keeping within the creative realm, that is also an option I've seen students do. Absolutely, Kendra, that's a great point. Uh, you know, uh, we've seen students go to uh, graphic design um, and we've seen students come from graphic design. So um, I think, you know, photography is one of those, one of those sort of uh, professions where uh, you can apply photography to almost any, anything that you do. And, um, uh, you know, so if you're thinking about a career uh, as a police officer, for example, and you love photography, you're going to need to, to take a program such as ours uh, to apply into uh, uh, the police college and become a, a forensic photographer or a forensic uh, investigator. Um, uh, uh, I mean, it's really very diversified. We had one girl graduate, I think it was about three years ago, it was pre-COVID, and we just heard from her a couple of times and she, now, she is now doing uh, natal and prenatal photography. And uh, she's got a lineup out her door. She can't keep up with the demand that she has created for the niche market that, that she has chosen. And she couldn't be happier. She couldn't, she's making a lot of money. So she, you know, double, a, double, uh, a double whammy. And uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, it's very, very diversified opportunities. Absolutely. Does anyone have any additional questions, concerns? Um, I'll do my best to make sure everybody gets a copy of that student testimonial as well as part of our follow up. Um, I have also put some links in the chat as well, including the links to the Niagara College Photography website, my email, um, Stephen's email is in there as well, and the scholarships and bursaries link. But if anyone needs any additional information, don't hesitate to email me. I'll put my email again in there, just if you need any information about the college or have any questions. That's awesome, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in uh, to, uh, to uh, listen to us and to ask your questions. And uh, like we've mentioned before, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, uh, Kendra, I think, has provided you with, uh, or the college has provided you with dates to, uh, to apply. Uh, it's not too early to apply now. Uh, you can apply right now. Uh, you won't get accepted right away. I think the acceptances start going out, is it early March or something like that? We actually started to offer earlier acceptances now too. So we have early acceptance dates. So you could learn very soon. Wow, fantastic. So that's, that, that's, that's news to me and that's, that's really cool. So yeah, I mean, if you can apply this afternoon, uh, <laughs> you can get off, off of your computer uh, with us and you can apply to this program uh, today. Uh, and I would say, don't hesitate. Uh, we fill up very quickly. Um, even with COVID uh, protocols, we had a reduced uh, intake uh, a year ago, uh, but this year we were back up to normal and uh, we had a waiting list. So, um, you know, uh, if you're interested in attending Niagara College uh, for the photography program, um, I, I would not hesitate to apply uh, as early as you can. Perfect, equal consideration date just for everyone if you're not looking for early uh, acceptances, it's February 1st. So that's the, the date that you'll wanna apply by. Um, but again, it's you were offering earlier acceptances this year as well. So the earlier, the better. Perfect. By the way, uh, the, we, uh, I think we max out at 40, uh, at 40 uh, students. Um, so there are 40 seats in the program, uh, which means we run two sections of 20 students each. Um, that's not a lot of students. Uh, typically we get four or five times that many applications, uh, just to give you an idea of how in demand uh, the program is. Uh, so like Kendra has mentioned, and I've mentioned, uh, you know, apply just as soon as you can. Perfect. All right, thank you all so much for attending. Please be sure to return to the Niagara College website for our open house information. Um, we are running AMA sessions for Ask Me Anything sessions with representatives from the college and other program sessions. Last link you'll get from me today as I put that open house uh, homepage back in there. Um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you all on campus. <laughs> Great, thanks very much, guys. Thank you very much. Have a nice rest of your day.